from a franchise that was buried deep in the catacombs beneath Nintendo headquarters comes the return of a character whose most frequent appearances in the last decade were on the roster for Smash games. That tosses most of the intervening years of change in the garbage and mostly displays like Super Metroid again. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. Metroid Dread. Return to a series that you've either been screaming at Nintendo to pay attention to for decades, or memory hold entirely at this point, with a sequel to a beloved handheld classic, up in all the right places, where you'll take command of the massive 80s shoulder-padded spacesuit of Samus, once again marooned in the depths of a planet with no Z-axis, and made to explore an insanely convoluted series of tunnels that seem ridiculous for anyone to have ever inhabited, to collect convenient upgrades for her suit that she somehow misplaces before every shipwreck. You might call it physical amnesia. Which at this point, you'd think she have some backups by now. To open up the next blocked hallway in this deceptively linear rat warren. Assuming, of course, that you can remember in God's name where it is, and progress the storyline, which at this point doesn't even really have Metroids in it anymore in a gameplay loop that we're all relieved is extremely familiar, and based in no way on whatever the heck Other M was trying to do. Recall the highs and lows of the more traditional Metroid experience, as you balance out the excitement of the occasionally frenetic combat, with the annoyance of slowly getting chipped away at by cheap shots until you lose like 10 minutes of progress, and the joy of blasting open a brand new path, with the agony of searching the entire map for one, before giving up and Googling it. Then experience the old school joys of Metroid gameplay, like having to shoot the same alien coming out of the same hole for five minutes to get your health back, putting the game down for a day or two and forgetting half of your abilities, and backtracking for 20 minutes to find out you still can't open up a door. In a twist on an old formula that will make you feel right at home if you're ancient enough to remember the TV show Full House, but will crush your spirits entirely as the parry mechanic pops up and your now decrepit middle-aged brain is too slow to react. Hey, stop running at me! This is elder abuse! Someone call the police! Cower in terror at the horror twist Nintendo put on Metroid Dread, the Emmy, that seem relatively innocuous at first glance with its cute name and generic design, right up to the point it shoots a big needle right into your brain, as you occasionally enter sectors with these unkillable enemies that will hunt you down and insta-kill you if you don't time a quick time event just right, which you mostly won't unless you get lucky with one of your panic button mashes. Then watch yourself get drained over and over again as you're thrown all the way back to the beginning, to eventually panic run to the rightest looking parts of the map at full speed, juking the thing like you're playing professional tag. And yes, that's a real thing. And eventually get past the mean robot man to fight a weird eyeball thing that turns your gun hand into an even bigger gun hand that you'll use to blast the metal behemoth to kingdom come, then steal its powers like you're some sort of Mega Man. In an addition, that's a nice changeup from the standard Metroid loop that effectively triggers that fight or flight by accurately capturing what it feels like to get run down by the f Terminator. Luckily for Samus, her armor is strong enough to withstand the pure butt clench she must feel getting chased, because I'm pretty sure I pinched right through my denim. Once you've sunk your teeth into an old school Metroid adventure, get ready to get your ass crushed by old school style boss fights where they suddenly demand about twice as much skill out of you as the entire rest of the game, as you dodge waves of different attacks and try to refill your ammo, while shooting an entire silo's worth of missiles directly into its face, and take an entire energy tank's worth of damage every time you get hit, as you get bodied over and over again as you try everything from denial to panic, only to realize that the only way to beat the boss is to patiently figure out every step of its entire pattern as you memorize each move and parry perfectly like a beautifully choreographed dance, until it activates its second phase, in climactic battles that provide a true challenge for hardcore Metroid fans, but will probably be the cause of more than one Switch getting demolished by velocity and a wall. As the true horror of Metroid Dread is revealed, it turns out you suck at Metroid. So curl up into a morph ball and shove that blaster into all the holes for a Metroid game that's far better than what basically anyone could have expected, especially from a company that mostly ignored it entirely for a decade. But don't you dare call it Metroidvania. I will personally come to your house and slap you right in the mouth. Starring Spamus Gunhand, Boston Dynamics GLaDOS, Uncle-in-Law Brain, 
Skeksis in space. Speak and spell, and a Metroid ton of backtracking. Are faced with overwhelming power. Accept your helplessness. Sekiro, Samus, die twice. Okay, but did we ever find out what actually happens to Samus when she goes into the Morph Ball? Does she shrink? She crushed into a slurry and reformed? People demand answers, man. Tell us what you'd like to hear in my epic voice in the comments below. One shall stand, one shall fall. The spice extends life. The spice expands consciousness. The spice is vital to space travel. Football is life. Due to the high demand, we're never gonna do an honest trailer for either Dragon Age or Metal Slug. I was acting, or was I?